Well, hello, my cat mojo friends. It is I, Jackson Galaxy, your cat daddy. And today we go back into the wide world. And when I say wide world, I mean outside of the cat cave and get the questions that you guys have been asking the most. And I pick questions, uh, since we get a lot of them, I usually pick the ones that get an asked uh, of me uh, a number of times over. So today's question comes from Shilpa in Ottawa, Canada. I uh, asked me a question about her young friend, Simba. And when you hear the question, I'm sure there's a lot of you guys that'll go, oh yeah. Let's check in with Shilpa. Hi, Jackson. This is Shilpa. I want you to talk to you about uh, my cat. His name is Simba. He is four months old and this is my first time with, uh, with a cat. But he's biting. He's biting a lot. And I don't know what to do. Like, I try not to play with my hand. Like, whenever he... I'm not even playing with my hand. I just play with a toy, with a wand or something. You can see it in the video. I'm just sitting and he'll just attack on my hand. What I do usually, I just pick him up and give him a toy. But then also he just get distracted again and then just attack on my feet or on my hand. This biting thing, I, I just wanted to be sure from the expert that it's not bad. Or if it is bad, what should I do? Thanks. Bye-bye. And there we have it. And Shilpa, just so you know, this is a very common question. Folks like you who are taking that first plunge into cat guardianship, uh, especially who get kittens to begin with, are asking that question because at that age, kittens are just one big toy-seeking missile. They're just looking for fun and sometimes in all the wrong places. And if we look at Simba's behavior, you'll see it's all about the hunt. And let's, let's just take a look at this one little moment here. See, it's a literal game of cat and mouse. You get it? Cat and mouse, because it's a computer mouse. Anyway, so that's what he's doing. You can see the way your hand moves. You're not trying to play with him with your hands, but he sees it as a hunting target anyway. He's learning what, what hunting is about. And I think that that's the challenge at his age to try to get him just sort of reined in while you're doing the whole working from home that so many of us have been doing over the past year and trying to say, well, this is when you play and this is when you don't. And try saying that to a four month old kitten sometime. It's not easy, but let me try to break it down for you. This part's a little bit of heavy lifting because kittens don't really adhere to a circadian rhythm, a body clock, as I'm sure you found out by now. Right now, it's just a matter of sleeping a little bit. Hey, I'm up, let's go, let's go. Oh, I'm sleeping, oh, I'm up, I'm up. And it's not until about seven months old that they really settle into a, a rhythm to their day. I sleep at this point and I eat and now I sleep and now I'm crazy and I play and I sleep. That will be much more predictable as time goes on. But that's not to say that you can't get Simba into a rhythm them that, that really just coalesces with yours. And how do we do that? First of all, we feed them meals instead of letting him free feed. Because if you think about it, a lot of that food just converts into sugar in the body, and then he's woof, 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 off to the races. If you really get him into a feeding schedule, you can feed him three, four times a day. As a growing boy, he needs that much food, but at least it happens at a specific time of day. So that then his sleeping and his crazy energy will also fall in line with the eating. So that's the first thing to do is to just get Get him into a schedule as best you can. What will also help push Simba into a rhythm, uh, and that's a schedule to his day, is play. And I know that you say that you're playing with him, Shilpa, but what you got to remember is that you're not presenting an attractive enough toy for him not to go after your fingers and toes and ankles and arms and arm bone connected to the whatever bone, right? Because those things that you're presenting move in a little bit more of an unpredictable way, a little fast, a little slow. You're talking on the phone, right? I do this all the time. Because I'm a hand talker, Shilpa. I'm a hand talker. But as I'm talking on the phone and I'm trying to make points, and maybe I'll put my hand down, then it's up again. Now I'm trying to make a point right now, now it's down again. Or, as you were doing, working at the computer, where you're just moving your hand around like that. That might as well be a great toy right there. And if you got uh, Simba just in that moment where he's a little crazy, which he clearly is in that video, then he's going to make a choice for that. So what do we do? We get into hunt, catch, kill, eat. First, we were getting him onto a meal time schedule. If we can, we're gonna play with him with that interactive toy that you were just talking about. And my favorite is a wand toy, feather at the end of it. And we just get that, get him moving around, get him tired. And if you wanna take a look at this video right here about my technique called boil and simmer, great way to get him tired, you know, cause it's gonna take a lot with a kitten. And then after you're done playing and you've got him tired, that's when you do the meal. That, after you do your meal, that's when you go to work. You wake up in the morning, you're getting him into a rhythm uh, by waking up together. Now you go into a little bit of play and you go into a meal and now you're at work and he will snooze. Play and meal equals rhythm 
and it coincides with your rhythm, and that's the way to get Simba going. So, it's all about rhythm, it's about food, it's about play. So the next thing I'd like you to think about, Shilpa, is knowing Simba's body language. Even at his age, he's not just all crazy all the time. He is very much in touch with his raw cat, the, the ancestral hunter. So I want you to take a look at this little section right here. So here, even though he's not moving, He's sending you tons of signals. His tail is swishing around and his eyes are planted firmly on his prey, which is your hand and the computer Ouch. mouse, and you know it's coming. So if you know it's coming, then you can stop it from happening. One of the things you can do is have a toy at the ready. Toys are not just about interactive toys. That's the main, that's your primary. You wanna make sure that you've got as many wand type toys as you could possibly get your hands on and make sure that there's variety, that you're not always breaking out the same toy. You always wanna make sure that you're putting those toys away so they're special when they come out. But there's also remote toys. Remote toys are the ones that, that you've heard me talk about that are, you know, whether they're a ball or whether they're the little fuzzy mice or just a crinkled up piece of paper. Anything that you can show to Simba and then chuck across the room. So when he's sort of zeroing in on your hand or, or your computer mouse or both of them, you can show him something else and just redirect him so you're not setting yourself up for the dreaded Simba, you know. And then there's the laser pointer. I'm not a big fan of laser pointers as a toy by themselves, but if you're in the middle of work and you just need to sort of guide him away from you a little bit, where you can point him in another direction just to get him doing something else, it'll keep him busy for a few minutes. And that's about what you can hope for in, in that moment before you can get your interactive toy and play with him. But what I'm saying is he's giving you hints. He is getting down low, he's doing the little wiggle, his tail is going, he's letting you know that he's about to pounce. So cut him off at the pass. If you see that body language, pull out a toy, throw it, take the laser pointer, point it. Just get him going in another direction so that you're not winding up having to say no to him all the time. I want you guys to be building a great relationship and you having to say no and picking him up and putting him down. And all those things are doing, by the way, Shilpa, is putting more air and more energy into that kitten balloon, you know? That's just setting both of you guys up for failure. So that's a great thing to do. Be proactive, have those toys in your pocket, and uh, be ready to pull out that interactive toy and get the rest of that cat energy energy out of his system, but if you're in the middle of work, the best thing you can do is get him moving. So one last thing, Shilpa, and, and you know, I know you don't want to hear this. You, you just got your first kitten and, and you've got all of this crazy energy going on around. You're trying to work, and you're trying to live your life, and you've got a kitten going after your fingers and your toes and your ankles and your computer mouse and the cable and anything else that isn't nailed down and probably some things that are nailed down. But the best thing that I know when you've got a really hyper kitten who's in that hyper phase of life is, drum roll please, thank you. Get another kitten. Get another kitten to keep him company so the two of them are playing, teaching each other what are the correct ways to play. Kittens teach each other that we're playing, we're rolling around, and then I do it too hard, I bite too hard, and then, ow, that hurt a lot. Now I'm smacking you hard, we fight, now we're off in opposite corners, then we come back again, and we've learned a lesson. We've learned how to play with one another without going too far. But also kittens wear each other out, and I, I am just convinced of this, that as those two cats grow older, they have one another, and cats being with other cats is the most natural thing to a cat. More natural than being with humans. Uh, when you think about it, when they're really young, they're with their siblings and their mom. So it is the most gratifying thing for a cat to grow up with another cat. They have one another. When you're working, they're together. They snooze together. They groom one another. Uh, and this is the right age to do it. At just 16 weeks old, he will be very accepting of another 16 week older or a little younger coming into his life. So do that. Get another kitten. I'm telling you, Shilpa, check back in with me in a couple of months when after after you do that, you will be thanking me. Well, not all the time. Sometimes you're like, these two kittens are driving me crazy. But for the most part, uh, you'll thank me about that one, okay? So Shilpa, that's what I got to offer you. Get Simba into a rhythm. Get the most attractive toy that you can possibly get. Don't set your boy up for failure. You're, you gotta know his signals when he's getting ready to go, when his, the energy is building up, when all that air is getting into the kitten itself. And you can bring that down before he pops. And finally, uh, get another kitten. 
Two is always better than one, and you'll be happier, and so will Simba. So that's it, Shilpa. Hopefully I was helpful. Your boy is adorable. I'm so glad that you jumped into the world of cat guardianship because we need more of you first timers out there. And uh, the, you'll know as he grows older, that relationship will be priceless between the two of you. And I'm glad that I could be of any assistance along the way. And for the rest of you guys out there, ask me your questions. Just like Shilpa did it, just uh, video a question and then video your cat doing what you're questioning about and send it on in to this address right here. And uh, hopefully I'll be able to answer that for you or at least get you started in the right direction. And that's about what we could hope for. You know, this is all about relationships and family members. And any of you guys, you know that family members are not cookie cutter in any way. So just getting you in the right direction is a good direction. All right, enough babbling. Until next time, you guys, uh, don't forget to uh, click the bell and subscribe to all those fun little YouTubey things and uh, pass this on to any friends that you have that have kittens. Until next, we speak all light and all love and all mojo to you. Bye, guys. Yeah.